Hello, I'm Denise. In this video, I'm going to try something different in that I'm feeling inspired to talk about something that's happening for me. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's happening for other people, but I thought part of my reason for doing this, um, this vlog is to sort of track my own progress, be an inspiration to others to create as well. But central to all of this is the fact that for me, my art making is part of my own healing journey. So making art has so many layers to it for me. And so um, it's no surprise really then to me that often my work has many layers in a piece. So as I was gathering the video to edit, um, I, I realized I had videoed a lot of the process of this creating Rachel. I ended up calling her Rachel, mainly because I was reading a book and the main character was Rachel and it was based in Ireland. And lately, a number of the paintings, this recent bunch, they all feel as though they have an Irishness to them. And my dad's both parents came from Ireland to New Zealand. So I do have um, Irish heritage. So there's something about them that has made me feel that. And so then I will go looking for Irish names so that there's a, you know, there's, there's a connection there made. So I've got the videos ready to share with you. And so I thought I'd have this big, deep conversation about what's happening for me at the moment. And I can disperse my voice through and so you can watch the video of me making that painting while I'm talking about something completely different. So that's the experiment because I thought I don't want to sit here for half an hour and just talk to the camera and you don't have any art content that you might have come to enjoy. But I thought it's important to me that this channel isn't just this is how I paint. You can paint like this. I actually want it to more be this is how I paint. How would you paint with your own feelings and process and things that you love? So it's not really meant as a um, step by step guide in the form that I'm making it at the moment. And so and, and the other part was I'd love to be able to connect more with my audience and share more of what's happening for me as part of that art connecting healing journey and I'd be interested if similar things are happening for others because when we connect and share it can be really an additional benefit to to our healing you know to know that you're not alone in it so in a manner of speaking I'll try and be a bit more succinct as to what am I getting at today and it kind of started this morning when I did my morning pages. I had an idea to start to have a conversation with my inner wise self, you know, or my soul self, whatever you like to call it. It's that inner knowing that when sometimes when you journal, you can ask deep questions and just listen. And, and for me, I've been doing it for so many years. Now I actually can often hear answers. And so I'll write them down and have an inner dialogue with myself. And so what I started to ask about today was something that's been coming up for me over and over again. You've heard me mention it on a few of these vlogs already. And that is um, wanting to clean up my stuff, clean up my studio, let things go. And what I've realized, it's funny. I'll, don't mind me if I chop around a bit, but I'll come back to the point. It's funny for me because I'm trying to not be in comparison mode. Um, and my favorite vlogger at the moment, video maker, is Sandy Hester. And so I've been really enjoying backlog of all of her videos. And what I'm really smitten by is her background. She's got this beautiful studio space with windows looking out onto her land. And it goes through to a green room where she's got um, her sitting room and dining room and things. And so her background and the environment that she's in and filming in and 
making her paintings is gorgeous and um, when I look around at my own studio and I'm making the videos I'm embarrassed to have the video on showing you the space and so that tells me something that you know there's some shame there so I realize it's really important that I have compassion for that one in me that makes big messes all the time and is a bit ashamed about it or, or another self is ashamed about it and um, so this morning when I was journaling about it and asking okay there's another layer to it I don't just want to clean out my studio and have less I actually want I feel as though in my mid 50s I feel as though I'm really being kind of called inner called almost like a future self calling me or my soul whatever you like to call it to shed some stuff in more ways than one like when I think of my future self or and I have like visualizations I suppose of you know you you think what would be your ideal day what what are you looking forward to in the future what would you love to create and one of the things that I often see sense and feel is a large large ish large -er studio space that's got a lot more spaciousness and a lot more calm than what I have and I am very lucky with what I have I have an incredible space as it is but my point is I end up in an absolute untidy disarray of kind of clutter bordering on hoardy but you know I'll go gently with that one um, so yeah it's you know I, I understand that I'm speaking from an absolute what privileged place so that's the life I'm in and so I want to live it to my best and be living with a sense of purpose and service so that is what's coming up and so then when I was journaling about that this morning um, I was sort of getting some inklings of answers coming through that part of it is a bit of security part of it I could actually see and remember my dad um, I went over to his mum and dad's in New Zealand many years ago um, four years before mum passed actually and helped I stayed there for a month and just helped out because mum had had um, surgery and she was in recovery and I helped her declutter her wardrobe and I can remember dad being quite stricken I could see the look on his face and the tension in his jaw that anything was going to get thrown away he was really you know he, he grew up really poor and both mum and him went through the depression era where life was really tough and we they were really poor and, and we grew up poor I grew up poor and so there's such a an entanglement with that um, th that genetic um, passing down it's like in the cells that that's what was passed down so I had an awareness of that I could remember that and so I was feeling about that and what else um, I guess I understand that there's some shame around it that I've attached to it and I have and I personally know that I work or I'm better when I'm kind to myself you know like I don't make much progress by being scolded like if someone you know that boot camp tough love and all that sort of shit that doesn't work for me that just makes me run like fight or flight like I'm out of there no I'm not having that um, but if I'm kind and coaxed and, and it, somebody's more compassionate about it so in this case me for me being being that compassionate to yourself um, I know that's where the progress will come because this is the thing this is the rub I suppose is that where I am now if I was to have to move house say you know next month if I was to have to move house because in some ways Philip and I dream of changing a home you know when we the one we will move into one day in the next decade or something 
and it just causes me quite a lot of anxiety to think what will I do um, you know how how will I how would I even move what would I do with all my stuff and so I just wonder what it will take and that's what I'm in the question of what will it take for me to feel safe to let a whole bunch of my stuff go what do I need that's causing me to not be able to be kind of tidy and take care of my stuff properly now what causes me to get into such chaos um, and then creativity to make my paintings it's like a compulsion that I just ignore the mess sometimes like recently I've just ignored the mess and dived into the painting because I thought I just can't stand to be in the discomfort of how badly I don't know how to do the full clean out and make it all sorted it's like that eludes me I've done it over the years different times but it gets into a big mess quite quickly and so yeah that's that's the truth of the discomfort that I'm currently living into or living through but I'm really really curious as to how I can bring myself through this and be in a studio space that I'm proud of that pretty much anyone could walk in once a week you know and it would be presentable um, and I would have been, you know like know clearly what's for me to keep for my next bunch of work and what's to be let go of so I hope that wasn't too long-winded of a thing to, to, to preface and so then today I started cleaning out the spare room a bit because we've got guests coming like we've got two spare rooms we've got one that's ready all the time and I dare not clutter that one but the other one has started to be a bit of a dumping ground and storage area for old paintings or new canvases waiting for me so it got a bit out of control and so that's needing to be tidied and I was listening to Tammy Simon and she was talking to I wrote her name down Amelia Elizabeth Lati and she wrote the book Embodying Gentle Power and she was talking about a Finnish word called Sisu and this conversation was so extraordinary it was um, Sisu is a Finnish word that encompasses Oh, I can't remember the words she used now for it but it's like the inner power the inner resolve to it's like this huge inner courage that people find to survive or get through really intense things and she also referred to a term that um, not post traumatic stress disorder but post traumatic stress learning I think it was learning it could have been another word if I find another that it's another word I'll type it in on here but like the idea that after trauma we have great growth or po post traumatic growth that's what I think the term post traumatic growth and so I know personally um, growing up in a violent sort of environment with dad being an alcoholic we grew up with trauma in the home so that's caused me to be highly sensitive I don't know which came first the chicken or the egg with that whether I was born highly sensitive or as a response to being raised in a violent home so highly high sensitivity is one of my coping ways of being in the world and then in 1997 when my sister Min her life was taken from her in a violent act um, by a stranger in New Zealand that was another huge trauma that shook the whole foundations of my life and then caused me to leave a pretty narrow-minded fundamentalist Christian almost cult type church that we were in at the time 
And so the, that that's like was a big post-traumatic growth opportunity in a way. And so after my sister died and we left that church six months later, it was only about a year, if that, that painting came into my life. So painting has become intrinsic to how I figure out things in my life. So I'm kind of curious. So, but this lady who wrote that book, she had um, a huge, she had a big trauma happen in her life. And then she, I can't remember if she started to do the study first or she had a vision around a, a, a similar time. The vision was to go to New Zealand and she did the equivalent of 30 miles running a day for 50 days. So like the equivalent of a marathon every day for 50 days. And when Tammy talked about this in the interview, she just was like so blown away by that. And it's very early in the book that she speaks about that. And that really touched me as well. And, and she was raising awareness about domestic violence. So the sort of synchronicities of this conversation today and what my mind has been thinking about and learning about from trauma is just so fascinating. I just love that when um, these deep and meaningful podcasts come along and they just meet you right where you are. And that's what happened to this with this one today. Um, I'll put a link to it below this video. Um, so yeah, with, with Amelia talking about Sisu and that inner strength, I was thinking, linking back to my pages this morning, um, what happened was I was facing the discomfort of how I'm feeling around all this. And then I thought, all right, I've got to carry on with my day now, start my day and go have breakfast and stuff. And I got up and I was really dizzy, like physically dizzy. And it was, and I just stopped, paused and just hung out with myself for a few minutes and acknowledged that that dizziness is most probably linked to the conversation that I was just having because I was so uncomfortable. It makes me so uncomfortable facing this mess, I suppose. I call it a mess or disorganization or having more stuff than I want to have, but I don't know how to let some go. And the disorganization of my studio space. That, that's in brief. Um, so it was really interesting to me that that's, that's what I experienced first thing this morning after doing my morning pages, that I, it made me really quite dizzy. So I'm bringing that here as that's where I'm at, as it is my youngest daughter's birthday today, which is always a significant time when our beautiful children have birthdays. Another year passes by and you remember when they came into the world and and all that kind of thing. And I thought, this is where I'm at at the moment in my life. And it's part of the vlog that I'm creating. It's meeting myself where I am. And I hope I meet you where you are. And um, yeah, let me know if this topic uh, resonates for you. I'd really love to hear about it if you feel like sharing it. And if you wanted to reach out to me without putting a public comment, you're welcome to email. I I just love this kind of stuff. It's just what I do. <laughs> it's really normal to me that you kind of meet with really good friends and we have deep and meaningful conversations about this kind of stuff because why not? Like it's really helpful. I find it is anyway. So yeah, along with this video, of how uh, Rachel came about. That's how I'm processes, processing some stuff today. Okay.